you feel like you're doing all this work for hardly any results and you're just like what is going on i'm so exhausted and drained i'm doing all these things but i'm getting nowhere you can't expect yourself to be able to build all those bridges all in one go get really good at one thing fill momentum with one thing and then start to move to the next thing Hello, hello. I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are listening to this or watching this in the world. It's a beautiful blue sunny day today as I am filming this and I have my tea and my green juice in front of me <laughs> um, and I'm ready. So um, I had this question that came in that basically said, what do you do when you feel like you're spreading yourself way too thin? And I think that so many of us feel this way. So many of us just feel so utterly exhausted by everything that's on our plates. Whether, you know, not just from a business perspective, but like, you know, trying to build our businesses and do all the things. And then, you know, you know, trying to just do the rest of life, like look after others, care for others, um, like try and like, look after our homes and do all the things like the list goes on and on and especially some of some of well quite a lot of this community have um you know other things like our mums or carers or have other jobs and it's like how do you juggle it all like how can you do it in a way that you doesn't make you feel so utterly exhausted and drained because the thing is i feel like we do want it all and we want it all now we want it all quickly and uh, in a way i think that's you know it's admirable it's a good thing for us to want that and to want more but then we have to know how to go about it in a way that doesn't burn us out and make us feel like headless chickens like trying to do all the things and just feeling utterly like all over the place so when i go through phases of feeling like oh my gosh like <laughs> i've got so much on my plate like this is just too much I know that I absolutely have to go back to tracking my time. And this is something that I try and do actually all the time <laughs> because it really helps me to be so much more focused and productive. Um, so the first thing is really looking at where are you spending your time? Like you have to do this first so that you can see like what is going on in your life and create that awareness of what is going on and so for me i actually do this i used to do it just by writing it on a piece of paper but i actually like to do it now by creating a i have like a second google calendar that i use and in the google calendar i literally use it to block out and to write down to, to document exactly what did happen so it'd be like from 8 30 to 9 like this happened from 9 till 9 30 this happened from 9 30 till 10 30 i was working on these things and then in the description of the calendar the like the event that i'm setting up for it i'll, I'll write a description of what i did and then how it made me feel and i pay i write i write down um yeah, like what was going on. But I think it's important as you're doing your time tracking to write down how is stuff making you feel? Because so often I think that we don't actually know what overwhelms us. We don't actually know what frustrates us. I mean, sometimes we do, don't get me wrong. But sometimes we just know stuff is annoying us and frustrating us, but we can't quite put our finger on exactly what it was that frustrated us the most. So you might like at the end of the day feel like, oh, like I'm so exhausted and frustrated but then it might be quite hazy to figure out, but like, why am I actually, actually specifically feeling this way? Like that can be the hard bit. So when you track your time and you pay attention to how it moves, make, how stuff's making you feel, you start to identify the stuff that is the draining stuff, the stuff that lights you up and makes you happy because the other piece is that I think a lot of the time we actually don't know what makes us happy. We don't know what brings us the most joy. Like, yes, we can, we've got a rough idea, but sometimes we don't know the tiny, teeny little things that bring us the most joy but when you track your time in the way i'm saying to track your time you think about that stuff so then you start to really put a picture or like paint the picture of your life of what is the good stuff and what is the bad stuff so start doing this and do it for at least a week of like opening up your calendar on google and literally adding in as a new event what happened and then writing in like what happened and then putting in your description what specifically that you did and how it made you feel and so do that and i do it in chunks of time so for example like sometimes i'm working on something specific 
And so maybe that takes me an hour. So for example, like now I'm filming a podcast. So when I go to the calendar to fill out what I was doing, I will say I was filming a podcast and I was doing this and this is how I felt. And so it's like a chunk of time. So maybe I'll say, you know, it'll take me 30 minutes. The other tip I have for you on this is when you get to the end of the day, do a review of the day and put it at the bottom of your calendar. So I I started inputting that at 9 p.m. I added in another like you know obviously you set it up as an event when you put it into your google calendar but i set it up as an uh, as another event that was my review of the day where i documented the things like going back over the day and reflecting on the day overall how i felt and overall what was the good stuff and what was the frustrating stuff or what was like the not so good stuff and you know all that kind of thing and um doing that in itself is going to help you to like kind of bring in focus on another level and just be so eye-opening but once you've done that for like say a week the next thing that you can do is do an audit literally go back over the week and audit it take all the things you're doing and pull them into one document so it might be like filming podcasts creating content calls replying to emails taking the kids to school like having lunch having breakfast having dinner picking the kids up from school make it you know whatever it is like whatever's on your plate literally write it all out like list everything out that you would that you've done and then start to categorize those things into for example um like family stuff or mum stuff or <clears throat> like eating um and just categorize those things so that you understand what category those t- those things that you those actions fall under and then once you've done that go through and highlight the ones that make you feel good and then put like a mark next to the ones that made you feel drained or frustrated um or just not good and so go through and do that and then look at what's there and then ask look at that and think are you spending most of your time with stuff that feels good are you spending most of your time with stuff that doesn't feel good? And what is it that doesn't make you feel good? Like, are you trying to do way too much then not being able to get through it, then feeling like you're failing? Are you just like trying to cram in too much and then you're just really rushing and you just feel like a headless chicken because you're just rushing and rushing and rushing and rushing? Is it that you actually don't know what to focus on so you feel out of control and then you're just drifting and you're just doing stuff but you don't really know what to do so you feel like you're wasting your time and then you're trying things but you're just all over the place? Like what specifically is it that is making you feel the way you feel? And so once you've got it all out on paper, you'll be able to see it and you'll have so much more clarity on it. And then you can look at it and think, okay, what are the things that are absolutely non-negotiables that have to be in my week based on what is already there. And so go through and mark your non-negotiables. For example, it might be taking the kids to school is a non-negotiable. Picking the kids up from school is a non-negotiable. That might be a non-negotiable. Having lunch is a non-negotiable. Whatever it is for you, like filming a podcast every week is a non-negotiable. But look at that, what you you absolutely is necessary for you to do um, every week. And then look at the stuff that is um, stuff that you need to keep doing but isn't as important or or whatever. And then look at the stuff that you would like to delegate. And maybe you can't delegate it right now, but just know that at some point you are going to delegate that stuff. And then look at the stuff that you can get rid of. What is the stuff, the noise, the insignificant crap that you're doing that you can get rid of? What is it? And get clear and circle stuff or scribble it out or whatever that is to go and be ruthless with this this is your time you don't get to have more time so if you want to live an amazing life and you want to feel good and you want to create that success and have that abundance and those breakthroughs then you have to get really good at managing your time and what you do with it and so going through this process will help you to make that happen because I'm telling you now like if you learn how to get bloody amazing at this, it's a game changer. Like, wow, like all of a sudden you can be achieving so much more when you know like what you need to focus on that's going to, and like what the outcome of that is gonna be. So do that. And so then you should have your non-negotiables, your the stuff you're gonna keep doing, the stuff you wanna delegate and the stuff that you wanna get rid of. 
So then the next layer to this is to look at it and think, actually, how do I how do I want things to change? Like, what do I actually want to add into this? So for example, for me, um, a while ago, I was looking at my uh, like my weekly calendar and thinking, you know, I really need to make more time for me. And so I blocked off uh, like a like a chunk of time on a day to go to the spa I went and joined the spa and um it it felt so counterintuitive at first to go because I was like I should be working this isn't work but I was like no this is work like this is deep creative thinking work and when I go to the spa like I literally like write so much copy and I'm doing I'm like really having breakthroughs with uh, my ideas and what I need to be you know what I need to create because I'm in a different space I'm in a different environment I'm way more tuned in and connected with myself and it's incredible um the the deep thinking and the deep creativity that happens when I go to the spa <laughs> and so I book it in because that's become a non-negotiable for me because when I wasn't doing that I was getting really burnt out because I was just coming into the office, sitting at my desk, working and working, going back home. And it was just, it wasn't working. And I was like, I can't be this person. This isn't working for me. So it's recognizing what is not working and doing something about it. So for me, I was like, right, I'm going to go to the spa, a different environment, a different place. And I'm going to do my deep thinking and creative thinking there. And so once a week, it's in there as a non-negotiable. So what are the non-negotiables or new non-negotiables that you want to add in? Like after I had kids, I added in that Friday was a non-negotiable day for the for, for hanging out with my kids, so, and um and I stick to it. Like there have been like a handful of times when I've had to do something or work on a Friday since I set that up. Um, so but you have to make it a non-negotiable. It can't just be like oh it's nice to do. No, it has to be non-negotiable in your calendar. You are doing it. So what are those things that you want to add in? How do you want to reorganize this so in a way that will help you to feel good and also when you go back and you look over your notes on how you were feeling like what is the stuff that brought that joy and that happiness to your life blooming put more of it in there and make sure that those are the the non-negotiables like what is it that makes you feel happy I realized for me when I was uh, doing it that the stuff that brought me the joy and the happiness from a work perspective was when I was working on the content side. Like I loved that. Like that's my creativity. That's my ideas. That's where my crazy stuff comes from. Like my magic comes from. And for a really, really long time, I was really stuck in like delegating and managing people. And I just like, that's not where my light shines at all. And I realized that, but I only realized it when I really started to pay attention to what I know something isn't working. I know I've got way too much on my plate and just doesn't really feel good. But why does it not feel good? And that's when I realized, actually, this all needs to change. So add that layer in of what are the new non-negotiables you want to add into your calendar and then create yourself a brand new CEO calendar of what you want to do, when you want to do it. And you might, you know, I I plan this out on a Sunday night. So I look at my week ahead and I plan out and I also do it in big chunks. So for example, I might have a chunk for um, like of two hours for coming up and creating new podcast ideas and it might include like researching like what questions have I received um what am I feeling on like what am I feeling what's bubbling up inside of me to say um and doing that work and so I might set aside like say two hours to like go through and be creative on that um but like go and chunk out your time on a Sunday night but I think at first you need to create the template for yourself your CEO calendar template um that will feel so much better than how you feel right now and I guess it doesn't mean to say there's not going to be a lot on your plate because there's always going to be a lot on all of our plates it just is that's life life is busy life is full it's not that's going to be it's not that but it's that you need to get really organized and focused with your time so that you know how to how, how you're showing up and you're showing up in a very focused organized way which then make you feel in control which then will help you to take the action which will then help you to get the results that you want so that is the important part i think from the other perspective uh, in terms of like having too much on your plate this is where looking at your time and where your time is being spent is going to be important in the sense of maybe you realize i am just biting off way more than i can chew like i need to stop thinking that I can 
be creating this, 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 and this, and this all at the same time. Like I always say, if you wanted to learn to get really good at a musical instrument, you wouldn't decide to learn the piano, the clarinet, the saxophone, and the drums all at the same time. Because you'd go crazy, be like, oh my God, like, no, I can't do this. You would pick one. Yeah, and then you'd get really, really good at it. You'd, you'd go and you'd take lessons and you'd practice and you'd take lessons and you'd practice and you'd practice and you'd practice until you got better and better and better. And then maybe once you got really good at the piano, you could learn the clarinet or whatever, I don't know. But it's the same with anything. But in business, I think we start and then we try to do all the things and then we're like, oh, I'm not getting anywhere. Ryan Dice, like he had this great analogy of how so many people in business build bridges and it's like you, well, he likened us doing stuff to like building a bridge. So for example, one bridge might be, I'm going to try and get really good on Instagram. So you start really trying to get good on Instagram, but then you're like, someone else is like, oh my God, but you should check out Pinterest. And so you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get really good at Pinterest. So then you've got your Instagram bridge grow- going and then you start your Pinterest bridge. And then someone else says, oh my gosh, but you need to start a podcast. So you're like, oh yeah. So you start your podcast bridge. And then someone's like, oh, actually, you know what? You need to create a course. And they start your course bridge. This was like, you need to add a membership in. So you start your membership bridge. And then they're like, oh, but you need to be building an email list. So then you just go and start your email, your, your email list bridge. And you have all these bridges that you've started but you've not finished you've not got one fully over to the other side where you're really getting results and you're building momentum and so then you're putting all this effort into all these different bridges you're doing all this work but not a single one of those bridges is complete where you're getting those results and that momentum so you feel like you're doing all this work for hardly any results and you're just like what is going on? I'm so exhausted and drained. I'm doing all these things, but I'm getting nowhere. And it's just like, well, look at how you're spending your time. Like you can't expect yourself to be able to do all of the things, especially if you're doing everything by yourself. You can't expect yourself to be able to build all those bridges all in one go. You've got to do it like one or literally a couple at a time. Get really good at one thing, Build momentum with one thing and then start to move to the next thing. Like, honestly, I think that that so many businesses and so many people do not progress because they're just trying to do way too much. You don't need to do it all. It Just scale it back and simplify and decide which area you are going to go all in on and focus on that for the next 90 days and see how far you can get in 90 days if you just go all in and focusing on like one thing or a handful of things like you just don't just don't focus on everything you don't need to and it's not going to help you so but again that will come up as you do this order and you're like well I've got an hour for list building and then I'm 20 minutes on Instagram but it's not enough time and I'm like and then you start to realize oh like I'm being inconsistent because I don't have enough time to like headspace to think this through if I had more headspace to think this through, I would come up with good ideas and I would do it, but I don't. And so I'm just, I'm inconsistent because I get to this point where I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to post something to Instagram. I don't have anything to say and I don't know what to say. So I'm not going to do anything. You know, <laughs> you've got to stop that cycle. So, and then, like I said, going through this process can really, really help you to kind of see, actually see what is going on. Like it helps me so much. And I do this over and over and over again, because we always need to hit the blooming reset button because we always get carried away with our great ideas and excitement for all these new things. Um, Like all of us do it. I think it's just who we are. It's just human nature, isn't it? So it's just kind of like always kind of reining it back and be like, actually, let's keep this simple. So it's not overwhelming and we can get results and it can feel good and, um, and we can build momentum. So I hope this was helpful. Definitely go and try it out. And if you do create a calendar, um, send send a screenshot and let me see it. And like, let's share them and maybe it'll help each other. Um, so yes, come and find me on Instagram at I am Carrie Green. If you have enjoyed this episode and you found it really helpful, I would appreciate it so, so much if you could leave me a review over on Apple Podcast, because the more reviews I get, the more it helps me. Well, it helps other people to discover the Shimi's business show. Um, so I would, yes, be very, very grateful. Um, so yes, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time um, for another fun episode and hopefully very helpful episode of the Shimi's business show. Bye. Bye.